Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kaler. Today I want to introduce the basic concept of linked lists. I'm going to do this in Java because that's what my students primarily use when they're first learning about linked lists. But I'll have a follow-up video that really looks at the impacts that it has if you're working in C++ instead. First question is just why bother with linked lists? So why go beyond array? Well, if we think about arrays, first of all, we have to have contiguous memory. So no matter how much data you want to manage, you've got to have a way to put it all in memory right in a row, because an array is exactly that. It's a long stretch of memory locations. Then, of course, we have ways with dynamic arrays to allow us to grow the array if we were wrong about predicting how much we needed in it. But growing is going to require copying everything over into a new larger array. We don't fix the array in place. We make a new bigger one and copy it all over. We also know that with arrays, if we're going to insert something into the middle of the array, then we're going to have to shove everything over first. Similarly, deleting from the middle requires moving a lot of data around. So, there are advantages to looking at alternatives, and there are some kinds of problems where a different approach works way better. This concept of linked lists comes down to this idea of a link to the next thing. The reason we're able to do this is that we have memory addresses, references in Java, pointers in some other languages, to an object, and we can store those in another object. So the idea is if I have one object that has the memory address of another object, then I can follow that memory address to the next object to get to the next thing in my list. So instead of going index by index, we're going to follow these memory addresses to the next object. So here's a linked list of integers. It's pointed to by a head, which is what we traditionally call the variable we use to point to the first node in our list. And then each of the nodes consists of a value followed by this memory address that is going to lead us to the next node. That will have a value followed by the memory address that leads us to the next node, and so on. The very last node, instead of having a memory address that gets us to another node, has the memory address zero or null, which we use to represent, hey, we don't have another one. So here's what a node class in Java might look like. We're going to have data of some kind. I've chosen int. This could be any data type. More importantly, we're going to have a reference to that next node. Now remember, this feels like we're putting a node inside a node and that we're going to have real problems. But this works because our object variables are always object reference variables. And so this is a reference to the next node. It will be null if there's not a next node. Notice that I have made these public You'll see people who prefer to see them private and then have provided public accessors and mutator functions. But I believe that that's an unnecessary pain. These are not data classes where we're trying to protect the data. In many, probably most cases, these will actually be inner classes. You notice I didn't bother to include the public before the class. Because in most cases, this actually won't be public. It might very well be private inside a class. Because of that, it's really not a need to practice the information hiding that we do in other kinds of classes. This is purely about implementation, and making it public makes it much simpler to work with. So you'll see public there much more frequently than private. The constructors are not necessary, but they are very convenient. So I recommend including in constructors of this type because they make your life much more simple as you create nodes, particularly when you create nodes that you already know what's going to go in it, 
what it's going to point at. This allows you to do that right from the beginning. So let's talk about some of the things we might do with a list. So here I've shown that we might be inserting into our original list. So I'm assuming that we have a temp variable that's pointing at the five, which is the node before the one we wanted to insert at. We want to insert, the, insert this node six. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make the node, make it point at the eight, the one that the five used to be pointing at and then make the one the five is in point at it. So the code for that would look like this. Node, insert node gets new node, and I've gone ahead and used my constructors to put in the data I want and the reference to that node after temp, so the one after the five, the eight, and then temp.next gets insert node. So that then makes sure that the five is pointing at the six. Deleting, somewhat similar concept. So again, I'm assuming that I have a temp pointer that is pointing to the node before the one we want to delete. And so all we need to do in Java is to make this node point at the one after we're wanting to delete from the list. That's gonna look like this. Do node delete node gets temp.next. So that gives me another reference to the node I'm wanting to pull out. And then temp.next gets delete node.next. So that's saying make that node with the eight in it point at the node that the 10 used to be pointing at. We could also write this as temp.next gets temp.next.next. So you can follow these along that can get a little confusing. So I encourage you to use the top one unless you feel very, very comfortable with what's going on. And in general, never get more than two nexts in a row. Because remember, we're always writing code for other humans as well as for the computer and we don't want to confuse them. Sometimes you have to add to the beginning of a list. It's a very common thing to want to do. Biggest issue there is remembering that we need to fix head. This might look like node insert node gets new node with the value we want. And then its next is gonna be what is currently head. In other words, what that head variable is currently pointing at. And then head will become the reference to the new node. We could actually even just do head gets new node to head because this right hand side will always get fully completed before we change the other one. So it will create the node pointing it at the current value of head before it then puts the value of this memory address into the head variable. Removing at the beginning would be similar. We're going to basically say head gets head next. Now searching a linked list can be a little bit interesting because of course we've got to go through until we find what we're looking for. So this is what a search might look like, assuming that we're actually doing it as a method and just returning the node that we found. So node head would be an indicator of here's the start of the list you're looking in and here's the value we're looking for. So we're gonna set up some sort of variable to keep track of where we are in the list. So I've just called that cur node and set it to be head. And then while cur node is not equal to null, while we haven't gotten to the end of the list, and cur node.data is not equal to val to find. So the value in the node we're currently looking at is not the one we're looking for. Then kernode gets kernode.next is going to move our temporary pointer to the next node so that it's pointing at the next node in the list. And then we get to the end of all this. Kernode is either null or it's pointing at the node that has the data we're looking for. So we're going to return that node since what we were interested in finding was the node itself. Let's see what that looks like in our original list before I started modifying it. So if we're looking for the eight, we're going to start by setting kernode to head. So head's pointing at the three, 
her node has that same memory address and it's also pointing at the three. Then it will move on and start pointing at the five. So because three was not equal to eight, five is not equal to eight either. So we'll use that her node is assigned her node dot next and move on to the eight. And at that point, it'll say, oh, kernode dot data equals the eight that I was looking for. So let's return kernode. Let's instead look at the possibility of looking for something that's not in the list. So now we're looking for the 15, which isn't there. So kernode again starts at head. It's going to move on to the five, to the eight. Each of those is a kernode gets kernode dot next and on to the 10 and on to the 13. And eventually it will become null because the 13 has that zero value, that null value in it. So kernode will also have that. That is going to stop our while loop because our first check in the while loop is, are we currently null? And if we're null, we're gonna stop. That will drop us out and return null. This is just a quick little introduction to the concept of linked lists. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.